Hi everyone, welcome to George's Library. My name is George and I will introduce you today's book. Today we're going to talk about Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Um, I loved it. I loved this book. I loved going through this entire experience. I loved going through all the characters. I loved being with the characters, knowing the characters, meeting the characters. I cannot state enough what a journey this book is. Now, it took me a long time to read it, but not because it's hard to read necessarily. Uh, although it's very long, like this is a tough book to go through. You, you can see it's got like um, 1,070 pages plus or minus different other, you know, things in there. So I've been spending a lot of time reading it um, because, you know, life happens. <laughs> you just got to do other things. You got to pay the rent. So you don't really have that much time to sit down and read. And uh, but, you know, it, it keeps you going. And it it's so it, it was a joy to finish the day and open the book and just dive into this world for an hour before going to bed. The story is about building a cathedral. This is not as boring as it might sound. Ken Follett tried to show us what building a cathedral means. You go, you travel, you see all these big cathedrals in these great countries like Spain or Italy or France. Ken Follett pretty much just went into these cathedrals, looked around and wanted to know what was the story behind behind them. And so he invented the characters of this book. Now, although you have a lot of technicalities in the writing style because you have the point of view of different main characters, and one of them is Tom Builder, who designed the cathedral and started building the cathedral throughout uh, the first half of the novel. Because you have his point of view, the entire novel has a lot of technical details. You get to see how a cathedral is being built, um, how it starts from a small idea, from a small ambition, up until the point where they actually start working on it. You know, there are so many twists in this story that you just... I literally read it and I was feeling like, come on already, just get it over with like why why is it always something standing against these people why why is this so hard for them to just go through with this i don't understand and you know you have you have evil characters you want to empathize with them and you feel like there is a glimpse glimpse of humanity inside and they do something crazy and you see them like true psychopath. Okay, I'm talking about William Hamley. This is a big spoiler here, maybe. The second point of view that you have for a long time, one of the major characters is Philip. Philip is a monk. He starts as a monk and then he becomes prior of Kingsbridge. Eventually, Tom Builder and Philip meet. They both end up wanting the same thing. So the two of them start working together and that's where the physical part of the novel starts. Throughout the novel, the point of view of the characters change. At the beginning, I thought that I will always just have Tom Builder's point of view and that the entire novel will come from his perspective. I would only see what he sees. I would only think what he thinks. But then the novel jumped to Philip, and then we spent a lot of time with Philip, and we get to see his point of view on things, we get to see his perspective, and it the, the detail is so beautiful that you actually see the life of these monks, you see how these monks used to live in the 12th century, um, how life was what it meant to be a monk, what it meant to be a builder during the Middle Ages. It's it's incredible to be in those shoes. You're always trying to find food, you're always trying to find shelter, you try to find work. This is pretty much where you stand throughout the novel. As the story progresses, you start going through different characters. The third important character 
is Aliena. Um, she's one of the privileged ones. At least she starts as being privileged. She is the daughter of the Earl. She comes from a rich family. The novel starts with her losing everything, losing her father. Her father loses the earldom. She gets raped and she's forced to live out on the streets and to find shelter and to try and figure things out for herself and for her brother. Her father makes her promise that she will get the earldom back. And this promise is her curse and also her drive to try and figure things out. She's a great character. She's a really, really great character. I think she's 16, maybe even younger at the beginning of the novel. The book is so well written and the characters are so well written that you can see how they grow up. All the things that happen to them eventually affect them and change them and transform them and make them the people who they end up being at the end of the novel. Two important characters would be Jack and Jack's mother. I don't remember having Ellen, Jack's mom. I don't remember having her point of view, but she's quite an important character. Jack definitely had his share of chapters. Jack, we, we've spent some good time with him. So one of the cons of the story is the uneven rhythm. I felt like the beginning was slow paced, which I loved because it gave you time to delve, delve into the story, delve into the world. As you were getting closer to the end of the story, the rhythm changed. At the beginning, it took you multiple chapters. It took you decades of time to solve an issue. I'm saying you would read 10 chapters, something that involved twists, but the conclusion or the solution to everything that happened would come later on and would also develop on a longer in a longer time, on longer pages. And then at the end, you would have one chapter when something happened, a twist would come up, and in the second chapter, they would already face the issue. And I felt like this is either on purpose, Can Fall it really wanted to just go through it like this for us to, to feel the change quicker, maybe, as we come closer to the end, or he wanted to finish the novel faster. As you were getting closer to the end, you simply would just jump from one thing to another and something would come up on Monday and then the next chapter would be one month later and you would see the solution to the issue that happened in the previous chapter which did not happen at the beginning of the book. The beginning of the book would just go like five, six chapters of something and then you would see slowly how they would come up with a solution for that. Another con would be that I found some chapters to be too long. There was another YouTuber who at some point said he made a review of Pillars of the Earth and he said that he could sense the fact that this is Ken Follett's not first novel but one of the first no first novels. You feel like he didn't really, I mean he's good, don't get me wrong, he's really good, but you can tell that he he was maybe not as patient as he would be now. I didn't read any of his recent novels actually. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna, I'm going to read the sequel for this and that was written in 2007 so it's recent. I'm very curious if, if it's, if I feel any different or if I feel any improvements in his technique or in his structure. One example that I can come up with is the chapter when Jack burns down the cathedral. Like we, we had only Tom's perspective or Philip's perspective up to that point. Wouldn't it have been more interesting if we just had Tom's perspective, him waking up and noticing that the cathedral is on fire? Tom only knows that Jack burned the cathedral much, much later on in the novel. We know, I mean, we have a full chapter where we see Jack burning down the cathedral. We have his perspective. We see him thinking, I found that chapter so long and really unnecessary. Thinking, okay, so what if I burn that? What if I burn those? What if I climb up there and then start burning up there? You don't really, I, I didn't find it important enough for me to spend that much time with Jack trying to see how to burn it up. I, I didn't get the point. I think the effect would have been much stronger if we did not have the chapter with Jack burning the cathedral and only finding this out later in the book 
or when other characters might find out. You know, keep it as a surprise element because the burning of the cathedral came as a surprise for everybody except the reader and Jack. No one else knew. And also related to Jack, we see him growing old. I liked him. I liked him as a character. He finishes what Tom Builder started. The thing is, so many things happen at the end of the novel and he does nothing but building the cathedral. Aliena is in trouble. Philip is in trouble. Aliena's trying to get back her earldom. Philip is trying to keep things going with everything. <laughs> and Jack is nowhere. Jack is nowhere in sight. I did not see why. I mean, at this point, Aliena is his future wife. They are together. They've been together for many years. She is having a difficult situation and yet he is not there. Was he building the cathedral still? Was he taking care of the kids? I don't know. It's not mentioned in the book. I just didn't understand why suddenly he didn't do anything. He was not important. He was not important. He didn't even come up with any ideas. Like he, he didn't even have an opinion on do that, do, don't do this, or do anything. You know, he was just out. I mean, yeah, sure, he did a lot of things up, up to this point, but I don't get it. That was, I mean, where's Jack? I want Jack. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. This was my first YouTube video. I hope you will be patient with me. If you have any advice for me or any comments regarding the video itself, and if, if you have any advice on how to improve my content, how to improve the quality of my videos and so on, please let me know in the comments and um, I will do my best to bring the best. Yeah. And I will very much appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Don't forget to subscribe.